On May 15, 2017, about 3.29 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, a Learjet 35A departed control flight while flying the ILS Runway 6 Circle to Land Runway 1 approach at the Teterboro Airport in Teterboro, New Jersey. The captain and the second command died. No one on the ground was injured. The airplane was destroyed by impact forces and post-crash fire. The Part 91 positioning flight departed the Philadelphia International Airport, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, bound for Teterboro about 3.04 p.m. The straight line distance from Philadelphia to Teterboro was about 80 nautical miles and the flight lasted about 25 minutes. The flight to Teterboro was the crew's third and last planned trip for the day. The company had designated the second command as a second command zero, which meant that he could only perform pilot monitoring duties. Company policy required the captain to always be the pilot flying when flying with the second command. However, the cockpit voice recording indicated the second command was the pilot flying for all but the final 15 seconds of the accident flight. For most of the flight, the captain instructed the second in command in flying the airplane, including flight basics such as altitude and airspeed. The cockpit voice recording also indicated that the crew failed to complete any of the required checklists during the flight, contrary to published guidance in company manuals. The captain filed an instrument flight rules flight plan which requested altitude of 27,000 feet for a planned distance of about 120 nautical miles, with an estimated time and route of 28 minutes. The crew's planned route is depicted in white. Air traffic control cleared them to fly at 4,000 feet. They were cleared for a slightly shorter route, shown in blue. The white arrow indicates the airplane's position and heading, and the magenta line shows the airplane's actual ground track. During the climb and level off at 4,000 feet, the captain instructed the second command to keep the airspeed below the FAA restriction of 250 knots for flight below 10,000 feet. Radar data indicated that the crew exceeded the airspeed restriction multiple times during the 25-minute flight. About eight minutes into the flight, when the airplane was only about 54 miles from the Teterboro Airport, the captain requested a higher altitude, not realizing how close they were to the airport. The controller denied the request, saying it would require the airplane be turned away from Teterboro to be resequenced. 452 Delta Alpha, any casting denier? 452 Delta Alpha, unable higher. I would have to spin you back around and sequence you with the rest of the traffic going into Teterboro. About two minutes later, when the airplane was about 48 nautical miles from the Teterboro Airport, air traffic control began vectoring the airplane for the ILS Runway 6 Circle to Runway 1 approach to the Teterboro Airport. Clear 452 Delta Alpha, New York approach, New York altitude 2975, flying 020, vector ILS 6, Circle 1. Okay, we got uh, 299 air, or excuse me, what was that again? Say that again for 452 Delta Alpha. Yeah, two minutes, two nine seven five in Newark. We are two Delta Alpha, flying zero two zero vector ILS six circle one. Okay, zero two zero four five two Delta Alpha. The cockpit voice recording indicated that the captain questioned the reason for the vectors and assigned approach, because he told the second command that they were still hundreds of miles away. About twenty six seconds later, air traffic control gave a descent clearance. Clear two Delta Alpha, descent to maintain three thousand. 3,000 After acknowledging that clearance, the captain realized that they were close to Teterboro and stated that they would be at Teterboro in 10 minutes. Air traffic control began providing radar vectors to intercept the localizer inbound course. Clear 2 Delta Alpha, flatting at 090, intercept the 6 localizer, contact New York approach 127.6. Okay, 127.6, fly heading 090 to intercept the 6 in the Teterboro, 452 Delta Alpha. While attempting to join the localizer, the second command mistook the Newark International Airport for Teterboro and told the captain that he had the runway in sight. The airplane flew through the localizer course of 060 degrees, and shortly after, air traffic control stated the following. Learjet 2 Delta Alpha, make sure you intercept the localizer. 452 Delta Alpha, copy. Learjet 2 Delta Alpha, left turn 20, heading for needed to join. We got it, 452 Delta Alpha. The airplane turned left and intercepted the localizer inbound. Air traffic control then directed the flight to the waypoint Vings. Learjet 2 Delta Alpha, uh, just go to, can you go to Vings? Can you do that? Vings, intercept localizer 6. 
2 Delta Alpha, copy. While the airplane was inbound to Vings, the second in command attempted to transfer the controls to the captain, but the captain did not respond and the second in command continued to fly the approach. Air traffic control cleared the airplane for the approach. Learjet 452 Delta Alpha is 8 miles from Vings, cross Vings at 2,000 feet, cut Alice runway 6, circle runway 1. Okay, cleared Alice 6, circle 1, uh, Vings 2,000, 452 Delta Alpha. The pilots did not conduct an approach briefing before beginning the approach, contrary to published guidance in company manuals. The captain stated to the second command that they would be circling to runway 1 and would be descending to the circling minimums of 760 feet. The Teterboro Airport is located near Newark, John F. Kennedy, and LaGuardia airports. To avoid conflicts with those airports, aircraft landing at Teterboro when the wind is from the north are often vectored to approach from the west, then circle to the land to the north on runway 1. The white line shows the ground tracks of previous aircraft flying the same circling approach that was assigned to the accident airplane. On the day of the accident, the wind was from the northwest at 16 to 20 knots, gusting to 32 knots. The initial approach clearance issued to the airplane was to fly the ILS runway 6 circle to runway 1. Airplanes flying this approach were typically told to circle at Torby, which was 3.8 nautical miles from the approach end of runway 6. After Torby, they would turn right and visually fly toward MetLife Stadium, and then turn left to line up with runway 1. About three minutes after receiving the approach clearance, air traffic control instructed the flight to do three things. One, contact Teterboro Tower. Two, cross Dandy at 1,500 feet. Three, circle at Torby. Learjet 2 Delta Alpha, contact Teterboro Tower, 1.5. Make sure you cross Dandy, 1,500 feet, circle at Torby. All right, Dandy, 200 feet, circle at Torby, 95, 452 Delta Alpha. Uh, Dandy at 1,500 feet, 2 Delta Alpha. 2015, the flight crew acknowledged these instructions but failed to do all three. First, they did not contact the tower. Second, the airplane crossed Dandy at 2,000 feet instead of 1,500 feet. Third, they did not turn at Torby. From this point on, the movement of the white airplane symbol and radio communications occur in real time. As the airplane crossed Torby, the captain continued to instruct the second in command, improperly directing him to descend to the minimum descent altitude of 760 feet, while the airplane continued straight toward runway 6, instead of turning right at Torby and proceeding visually to the runway. One and a half minutes later, the crew still had not switched to the tower radio frequency until told a second time by air traffic control. 2 Delta Alpha, contact to the bar tower 195. 2 Delta Alpha. The captain continued to instruct the second in command to descend to 760 feet instead of contacting the tower. 452 Delta Alpha, to the bar tower. Yeah, we're up uh, for the circling now. Uh, 1, 2 Delta Alpha. Roger, Lear 452 Delta Alpha, wind 36016, gust 32, runway 1, continue traffic holding position. 452 Delta Alpha. The airplane continued toward the airport as the captain instructed the second in command to stop the descent. Air 2 Delta Alpha, runway 1, clear to land, safe parking. Now we're going to be at Jet Aviation, 452 Delta Alpha, clear to land 1. When the airplane was about one nautical miles from the end of runway 6, the tower questioned the crew about the turn. He's landing 5 Delta Alpha, Alpha. can you start that turn? Yes sir, we're doing it right now, 452 Delta Alpha. While starting the turn to the right, the second in command told the captain, your flight controls, but the captain did not respond. The airplane lost 300 feet in the turn and the enhanced ground proximity warning system sounded, 500 feet and sink rate pull up. The second in command asked the captain to take the flight controls again and finally the captain took the controls, directed the second in command to watch the airspeed and began a high bank left turn to runway one. During the turn, the second in command called airspeed four times. The captain called out stall as the second command agreed and repeated airspeed twice. The enhanced ground proximity warning system sounded sink rate, pull up. A security camera captured the airplane as it impacted the ground at a right bank angle of about 125 degrees. 
The airplane crashed in the parking lot less than one mile southeast of the Teterboro Airport about 15 seconds after the captain took the controls.